this morning we're going to practice uh, a little bit of true north alignment, getting really embodied and in tune with our physicalness. So to start out, we're going to start low to the ground, finding your way into child's pose. Take your knees wide, shins to the mats, and then walk your fingertips long and let your forehead get grounded all the way down. And just take a moment to get grounded here. Feeling the solid, stable, firm ground beneath you. Knowing that no matter how anxious, no matter how flighty or distracted we get, this is always a place we can come home to get grounded, to feel that element of earth, that stabilizing force, I want you to feel yourself just surrendering here, letting your heart melt, your forehead get heavy into the mat, and just letting your breath be natural. So we can use this gravitational force, this earth element, as a place to surrender. We can also use it as a place to, to find our strength. So let's begin now to wake up through the palms. Press them into the earth. Lift your elbows off of the earth. So our bones become our earth element within our, within our body structure. So we're trying to get in touch with those bones. So stacking the wrists and elbows and shoulders nice and straight. Root down through the shins and the top of the feet. Wake up through the legs here. And then I want you to actively pull the shoulder blades away from the ears. And imagine you're actually plugging your arm bones into your shoulder socket. So you're plugging back. You're really getting grounded into that earth element of your bones here. And as you really plug those shoulders back, sit your hips back and reawaken those shins one more time, pressing into the tops of the feet. This time we're gonna draw your lower ribs in, almost like a corset. So when you hug muscle to bone or you hug your organs around your spine here, it's a way of grounding our energy, grounding into that internal earth element. Take one more breath here, nice and active from palms to hips, navel in. Emptying out into that surrendered state, just letting it go. With your next inhale, grounding through the hands, begin to come up into tabletop pose. You're going to bring the wrists right underneath your shoulders and the knees under the hips, bringing the shins parallel to the mat. So now we're going to tune into that water energy. So finding your flow through your cat cow, there's our cat right here. Inhale, you're going to drop the belly, gaze up. With your exhale, let the chin roll under, tuck your tailbone, and really press the back of the heart towards the ceiling. So moving through those waves, inhaling as you arch your back and open the heart. Exhaling as you tuck the chin and round the back of the heart to the ceiling. And then maybe even closing your eyes, coming into a sense of flow, your breath, your movements. And when we connect to this water element, beyond just physically flowing, we begin to let ourselves kind of color outside the lines. So if you want to maybe take your hips from side to side, feeling the lateral side body opening up, you know, maybe kind of hula dancing it out, making circles, just allow your movement to be organic. We spoke yesterday a lot about letting go. And today, that letting go means letting go of what you know, what you think you know about yoga, about yourself, about your body. And get embodied right here and now. Be curious. One more flow through that wave of breath in and out. And you're going to pause. And then just find your nice neutral spine. 
Take your hands one palm's length in front of where they are. Tuck your toes. We're going to make your way to your first downward dog. Begin to lift your hips. Take them up. Take them back and pause. First thing we do, find that earth element. Spread your fingers and notice if you bring a lot of weight back into the wrist. Try to bring the weight more into the fingertips, into the knuckles of the hands. Really get strong in that earth element. Same with the feet. The heels are dropping down towards the mat. Maybe see if you can lift your toes off the mat. Yeah, and then set them right back down. So we find that earth, draw the lower ribs in, getting nice and strong, and then balance out with a little bit of ease. So soften the shoulders away from the ears, bring some softness into those elbows, softness into the knees, and then see if that allows you to find a little more space as you press the heart back, hips lift up and back. Taking one more deep, full breath in here. Exhale, empty out. On your inhale, look forward to your hands and just begin to slowly walk your feet so the knees can stay nice and bent. Take an inhale, halfway lift, bringing the heart nice and long. One more moment to find that water element as you trickle down all the way into your ragdoll. Breathing here, returning your awareness into the grounding of your feet. Really feel your feet come to life as if you're pressing so hard into the feet that you're going to grow roots into the ground. And from those strong roots, we draw up and you begin to feel the back of your legs waking up, lifting up through the back of your hips, even if the knees stay bent. So my knees stay nice and bent here. And then from that really strong ground, take an inhale. And with your exhale, melt down, melting into that fluid space of the spine. And then maybe you just let yourself kind of flow from side to side. And then making your way back into neutral. Feel those feet and legs wake up one more time. And then begin to wake up the navel point. Draw the navel in towards the spine. Notice how you already start to lift. And then I want you to take a few breaths here just to lift one vertebrae at a time. Letting the head stay nice and heavy and the chin glued down to the chest. As you slowly unroll. Almost like you're blossoming from the roots of your feet, starting to lift up the head, roll the shoulders back, and settle them down your spine. Coming to the top of your mat, we're going to find a nice strong Tadasana, so our true north. Tadasana means to stand at attention, so we start to really pay attention to how we stand. So let's close the eyes to do that. Close your eyes. And starting with your feet, once again, find that strong, grounded foundation. So I want you to start by pressing into the balls of your feet, lifting your toes, and then slowly allowing the toes to soften down without gripping the mat. And then notice if you shift front to back, side to side. We naturally kind of drift when we stand. And I want you to really get strong as you press through the feet, lift your kneecaps. And you may start to feel already how you feel more firm, more grounded like the earth. Draw the navel in towards the spine, corseting in the rib cage here. And then to find that water element, I want you to bring a little bit of bend into your knees, just a little soft bend. Stay strong though in the legs. And then you're going to tilt your tailbone under and you're drawing that navel in. So if you imagine your tailbone kind of like a bowl of water, you don't want to spill the water out of the front. You don't want to spill the water out of the back. We want to find a nice neutral pelvis here to hold in that water. Again, a nice strong foundation. Inhale, lift to the crown. This time you're going to roll open the palms if they're not already facing towards the front. Feel the arms open up. And now we wake up to the element of air. So breathing up, up into the heart, up into the chest, up all the way through the crown of the head, as if you're growing from those roots all the way up strong. And so we're continually trying to find balance in the elements of our body. In each pose, can we first find the ground? We get strong. 
Then we find the ease of water. Can we be a little fluid? Firing up from the navel point to start to lift that energy into the ether, the space of the lungs, as we expand into our truest form here. Find space for something new. All right, inhale as reach up, fingertips towards the ceiling. As you exhale, bring your thumbs to touch your heart center. Taking a sun salutation, A here. Inhaling, reaching palms to the sky. As you exhale, fold it down, thumbs to the heart, then all the way down to the earth. On your next inhale, palms can come to the shins or the thighs, get really long, navel in, finding that fire. As you exhale, bring the palms to meet the earth, starting to find that strength already. You're gonna step both feet back and we're gonna slow-mo this flow and take a pause here. So we feel the fire, knowing that we're always in choice to drop the knees if you need a little bit less. But either space, stay engaged with the process of balancing out all of those elements. Because this is what embodies us, what keeps our mind from drifting away of the worries of the world. As we stay embodied, can you find the earth, the fire, the breath, and be soft in all of it, inhale. And then exhale, lower all the way to the belly. Come to the tops of your feet, root the tops of the feet, the palms, inhale, lifting up, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, go ahead and lower down. Making your way up through tabletop perhaps, or maybe into a full plank. We're gonna come to downward dog, hips moving up and back towards the sky. Take a deep breath in. Open mouth, sigh it out. Deep breath in. One more exhale, let it out. Take the journey from the feet to the hands all the way to the top of your mat. On an inhale, finding your flat spine halfway lift. With the exhale, folding it down. Ground through the feet, reach all the way up, fingertips stretch towards the sky. Exhale, bring the palms together in front of your heart, check in. Inhale, root to rise, fingers high. Exhale, fold it all the way down. Halfway lift, finding that flat spine, heart reaching long, palms towards the earth, step it back. Feet meet, or the knees meet the mat, and then lower on the same breath all the way to the belly, finding your cobra pose. Exhaling lower. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and take them back. One more breath in through the nose and emptying it out. Walk your feet to all the way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fold. Keeping your feet together, maybe hip width distance. We're going to sit, sink the hips low, sit back into towards a chair pose, but keep the hands down for a moment. So notice if the knees are coming in front of the ankles, try to take your shins back. So you're really bringing the knees almost stacked over the ankles. And then bring the palms to touch and the thumbs to your heart center. Keep the belly on the thighs. And then slowly begin to peel the shoulders back. Keep the weight into the heels. And you find yourself into your chair pose. Pause. You should be feeling that strong ground in the legs. Try to see if you can balance that with the lift of the heart, the shoulders opening back. You can stay here, embodied, perhaps extending the fingertips long, shoulders back. It's not how you do the pose. It's who you are being in the pose, and only you know that. So what's going on between the ears? The most important part, can you find ease there? Take one more breath. As you exhale, take it down forward, forward. Inhale, halfway lift. On the exhale, let the palms come down. Taking that chaturanga or a nataranga, listening to yourself. I'm going to go ahead and skip it this time. Take my hips straight to down dog. We'll meet there. Taking your time to get there. Pause. Meeting strong through the left foot. Start to lift your right heel up behind you. 
not very high. You want to keep it in your side of view so that you can turn all five toes to the ground. Imagine you're stepping your foot directly onto a wall behind you. Feeling the length as you root from the palms into the earth to extend through that right heel. Inhale. As you exhale, draw the knee towards your nose and you're going to walk it or step it or wiggle it, however you get there, foot between your hands. Spinning your left heel down towards the mat, begin to bring the hands on towards your hips and rise to warrior one. Pause. Right hip back, left hip forward. Find that earth element, pressing down through the full four corners of the right foot, and then sealing the outer edge of your back foot down. Right? So we've got the feet, the root, and then the legs. Can you feel that energy drawing up into the legs? And now I want you to scissor your hips, right hip back, left hip forward, stay grounded. And then can you stay strong in your lower body, but begin to lift a little taller. Maybe the arms naturally come up if they're not already. And then we check in, right? That earth element was your bones. Can you plug the arm bones into your shoulder sockets? Yeah, taking them down the back. Can you draw the lower ribs in, finding the fire of the belly here? Taking one more inhale to extend through the fingertips. As you exhale, bring the palms to meet the earth. Coming to the ball of the left foot, step the right foot to meet the left. Inhale. Vinyasa on your exhale. Knees can drop if you'd like. Again, you can always skip these even if I don't offer that. Meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, taking your left heel back behind you. Flex the toes towards the earth once again. Looking that all five toes are facing down. And you're really turning that pinky toe down and pressing back. Pressing like you're in, pressing into a solid surface. And then press into the surface of your mat with your hands. Get long. One more inhale. As you exhale, slowly journey that left foot to the top of your mat. Wiggle it if you need to. Right heel is going to come to meet the earth, hands on the hips to rise, sink into your left knee, feel the foot, left foot grounded down, outer edge of right foot grounded down, legs awake and strong, finding that warrior, square the hips, right hip wrapping forward, left hip wrapping back, and then re-engage through your feet, belly in lift, maybe the arms lift, shoulders down. So when we get embodied and we feel ourselves really present, it takes our awareness away from our, our busy minds, right? That's what this practice is really designed for, to give us a grounding place that's not overthinking. So really embody yourself here. Be a warrior, not a worrier. Take one more breath. And as you exhale, palms to the earth. This time you're just going to take that right foot, step it up to meet your left top of your mat. Inhale, finding your flat spine. Get long. Exhale, bow it out. Sitting into that chair pose once more. Inhale, reach the hands through the heart or maybe up to the sky. And then check in. Who are you being here? One of the most basic or actually the only yoga sutra that talks about asana just mentions one sutra, one line. And it says our asana, which means seat or posture, should be a balance of effort, which we're all feeling here, and ease. So bring in a little bit of ease for this last breath. Inhale, maybe the corners of the mouth come up. Exhale, sit a little deeper for yourself. Taking one more inhale. And then with your exhale, re-release. Taking a breath in, halfway lift. Taking your vinyasa or stepping straight back to your downward facing dog. I'm going to take a nice easy vinyasa here just to keep finding that space opening in the heart. Meeting in downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And exhale to ground yourself through the heels. Take the right leg up once again, keeping that foot nice and strong. Flex the toes toward your face. Inhale here. As you exhale, we're going to bring the foot towards the hands. So this might mean you got to kind of wiggle it to get there. No big deal. 
Left heel comes back to the floor, rising back into your warrior one. In here once, find it again. Ground through the feet, strong legs, square the hips. Fingertips will start reaching up towards the sky. So when the fingers come high, plug those arms back into the shoulder sockets. Navel drawing in to support you here. Now you're going to keep this posture nice and strong, but begin to let your arms come all the way back. Interlace your hands behind your back, just like that. All right, roll the shoulder heads back. Lift up through the heart space. Sink a little deeper into that right knee. Now really ground through the outer edge of your back foot, that left foot. Pull the heart away from your left heel as you begin to draw it forward, folding, folding towards that right thigh. Pause and go slow. Now pause here once more, right before you come all the way down. Pull the right hip back, left hip forward. Reground through the feet, pulling long through the heart, and then last exhale starts to bow you to your deepest level. Try to bring yourself to the inside of your thigh. Hands can stay on the low back, rolling those shoulder blades together, and then let your head hang. Take a moment, find the back heel, that left heel rooting down. Draw the left hip forward, right hip back. Re square the hip. And then release the hands for your next inhale all the way back into your warrior one. Exhale, hands to heart center. Pause here. Come onto the ball of your back foot. So you're just going to come onto the ball, start to square the hips. So you're in a little bit of a lunge here. And then you're going to come forward, lean the torso, stepping into that right foot. You're going to bring your left foot to meet the right, finding chair pose. Reach your arms up to the sky. Sink your hips back, weight into the heels, fingers high, corners of your mouth to your ears, and the shoulder blades melt down the back. One more inhale, and exhale forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Palms meet the ground. Feet come to the back of your mat. Chaturanga there, or not aranga there. I'm going to meet you guys in downward facing dog. Once you've gotten there, do a check in. And then you'll begin to reach your left heel back, flexing the toes towards the earth, getting nice and strong in the left foot. Inhale. As you exhale, you're stepping the left foot or wiggling it or walking it between the hands. Right heel flat, rise up, warrior one. Sink into that left knee, drawing your right hip forward, left hip back. Anchor into the outer edge of your back foot. And then reach your arms high to the sky, shoulders down the back. Finding your fire, finding your foundation here. Taking an inhale as you exhale. Release the hands behind the back to find your own hand once again. But this time I want you to switch the grips of your hand. So it's just all your fingers are interweaving in that kind of weird and funky way. And then puff up the chest, lift the heart. Keep strong in the leg. So bending in the left knee, pressing into the outer edge of your right foot, squaring the hip. One more inhale, peeling up and open. Then with your exhale, getting long and strong as you fold forward. Humble warrior. We're getting humble with ourselves here. Coming to the inside of that left thigh. Shoulders roll from the ears, head drapes to the earth. Drink in a deep inhale and release it out. Ground through the feet, inhale, you'll begin to rise, releasing the hands on your way there. And then bring the hands to your heart center. Pause. And start to come onto the ball of your back foot as you turn that right hip even more forward. Finding a little bit of a crescent lunge. Challenging our balance, but trusting that strength, that stability as we draw muscle to bone and really find our own internal earth. Start to lean your torso forward. Pause. Shifting weight into your left foot. Bring the right foot off the earth and bring the right foot to meet the left. Chair pose. Reach the arms high. Sink the hips low. Inhale here. And as you exhale, release into a forward fold. Go ahead and walk your feet a little bit wider than your hips here. You're going to take your peace sign fingers, index finger and middle finger, and you're going to grab a hold of your big toe. And then Pressing down into the earth through your big toes. So you're smashing your fingers here. Inhale, heart long. 
And then keep smashing your fingers as you exhale. You're going to pull yourself down. So the elbows move to the sides of your shins, kind of back crown of the head releases and then really roll the shoulder blades away from the ears so helping us to get a deep stretch to the back body plug the heels down lift the hips inhale as you exhale you're in control of pulling yourself as deep as feels good here one more breath in one more chance to deepen it in and then on your next inhale, shift the weight to the heels. Let your hands come out from the toes. Walk your feet to whatever level, whatever closeness feels stable for you. And we're just going to come all the way up to standing. And pause here. All right. So a really great place to find all of these elements um, <clears throat> and really to require ourselves to be present with them at balance poses because the balance poses we've really got to yoke our minds we've really got to be present in order to know how to bring ourselves back into equilibrium so we're going to start with an easy one we're going to start with tree pose so left foot on the earth right knee is going to open heel to ankle ah see i'm already falling not that easy <laughs> ankle foot comes to the calf Perhaps you come all the way up. The only thing I want you to really avoid is pressing directly to the inside of your knee because we want to be really mindful of our joints here. So wherever you've found that right foot, I want you to begin with the hands sealed together at your heart and really conscious about sealing them. So press into the palms. Squeeze the shoulder blades as if they're kissing together behind you. All right. Now ground down really strong. Find those roots in your left foot, lifting up through the left kneecap. So you should really feel like that is your trunk, like your tree. You are earth. You are that effort. And the same with that right foot, pressing it into your left, sealing them together, just like you're sealing your hands, where there's effort between both, grounding them in. And now we find that stable foundation. A tree has to be strong so it stays standing. But as you move up your tree or up a tree, it may be even growing your branches if that's a thing. But think about the whole upper body as a branch, which is okay to bend, right? We bend so we don't break. We balance that earth. Because if we try to stay too rigid, as soon as something comes along, we're going to fall right off. And just like our standing posture is a living thing, our balance is a living thing. So it's about not perfecting it and holding, it's about going with it so that you can readjust, realign. One more breath. And as you exhale, let it out. Shake out the left leg, maybe kind of give yourself a little bit of love on that left side. And now we got two sides. So two opportunities to be curious, to show up here. We'll ground down through that right leg. Left heel to ankle, calf, upper thigh, not to knee. Palms to your heart center. Pause here for a moment. And really get mindful and get grounded and strong through the right foot into the right leg. Create that strong trunk and then find that kissing motion, that sealing motion of your left foot giving that earth energy back to the right leg. So they're kind of playing this game with each other, just like your palms, where if you press one, the other presses back and you kind of meet in the middle in this nice, strong, stable point. If you haven't already, go ahead and grow your branches in any way that feels natural, but let them be that element of ease, the more water element here, the more air element. So we root to rise. It's a rebound effect. The more strong and stable we become, the more fluid and open and expansive we allow ourselves to be. One more breath. And then with your exhale, go ahead and lower it down. Shake it out. All right. I'm going to take one more balance pose. I'm going to start by, once again, finding that foundation in your left leg. This time, let's start with the hands on your hips, getting nice and stable. You'll just start to shift your weight into that left foot. 
and you're going to start to take your right knee up in front of you. So take it up in front of you, keep the foot flexed, so you're creating like a little 90 degree angle here. And then just notice here, there's a tendency sometimes for that right hip to lift. Can you bring it back down? Find your same true north, tucking the pelvis under, lifting the belly in. Oh yeah, feeling yourself come alive. Now you're going to take that right hand and bring it onto your knee. So notice I'm not holding it, the leg doesn't go limp, I'm just kind of supporting here. If you have an extended leg practice or would like to go a little deeper, you can grab your big toe or the outer edge of your right foot, and you don't even have to straighten it. You can just bring the foot forward like this. Again, the balance isn't about staying steady, it's about being present. So whether you have that foot extended or you're just holding the knee, not just holding it, if you're there holding your knee, then take it out to the right side. Notice again, maybe that right hip is lifting. So our mindfulness is that we can really check in and start to realign ourselves when we know what our true north, what that Tadasana feels like. Because we're never gonna really want our hips to be off center. Take one more breath here. Bring your knee back towards center. Pause, bring your hand back onto your hip. We're not done yet. I'm gonna move forward so I don't run out of room. Start to tilt forward and kick your right leg back. Ooh, notice the journey. The journey is part of the balance. It's not, again, about being stagnant. A little soft bend in that left knee. You're going to turn your right hip to the ground. Imagine just like in that downward dog, you're turning your pinky toe to the ground. Take an inhale, lengthen the heart. As you exhale, bend your left knee. Bring your right foot to meet the left. Short little chair pose, and then inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands into your heart and then bring your hands to your hips. You're gonna ground down and root through your right foot. Let's bring your hands, or your, keep your hands on your hips. Bring your left knee up in line with your hip. Now once again, just notice. Our goal is not to perfect, it's just to be present. Lower that left hip. Keep lifting the knee, keeping it strong. Bring your left hand to support on your knee. Lifting up the heart, keeping that true north. We're rooting, we're rising, we're breathing things, yeah? If you grabbed the foot or you want to try that on this side, you can take it to wherever you need to go. Finding your drishti, forgot to mention that. It's a grounding place, right? We also want to align our gaze. Take your knee to the left side. Or maybe the foot. Notice what shifted here. Maybe the hips lifting because that's gonna really alleviate having to hold ourselves so much in that right hip. I talked yesterday about how we, we, as humans, try to find the path of least resistance, and that shows up a lot on our mat. So we're trying to counteract by being, not in the resistance, but flowing with it. Bring your knee back forward, pause. And then your hips, hands back onto the hips, and just slowly begin to kick back as you tilt forward. Soft bend in the knee helps to be kind of like a stabilizing force here. Flex and straighten the leg in the air. That one's going to be straight and strong. Standing leg can be bent. Take the left hip towards the mat. Lengthen long. And then bending that right knee a little more. Bring the left foot to meet the right. Inhale, straighten yourself up. And then exhale back to heart center. Sweep your arms out. Exhale, bow it down, forward fold. Inhale, crown of the head reaches long. Exhale, allow the palms to come to the earth. Step your feet back. Another chaturanga here or a nadaranga, listening to yourself. Meeting in downward facing dog. All right, take an inhale breath here. And exhale breath out. And then an inhale breath coming forward. And an exhale to lower back all the way to your belly. <coughs> Got a little furry friend on the back of my mat here. So he's going to keep my toes nice and warm. All right. I know, Bailey. I know. <laughs> We're going to actually bring our hands back behind you. Kind of like, uh, I imagine myself holding like a Superman cape here. So let's imagine we're Superman. 
are holding on to that cape. Inhale, lift the head, lift the feet, then lift your hands into that backwards V. Shoot your fingers back. The shoulders are pulling away from the ears. And there's a tendency to crunch your neck, especially if you're looking at your computer or your phone. I want you instead to lengthen the back of the neck. Take the gaze down. So if you really are Superman, you're wanting to look what's going on down there, right? Now zip your belly up. Let's fly just a little bit higher. And on your exhale, lower down. Bring your right ear to the mat. Maybe flip the palms. And just settle in to that element of space. We haven't talked much about that. It's really the culmination of all that we work in, this element of creating space for something new, space for clarity, space to just be. Okay, we're going to take either that same series again or... If you can bend your knees and grab onto your feet for a full bow pose, then you can join me in that. So you're either going to look like me or you're going to look just like we just looked. So on your inhale, lift the chest in either position. Then lift your legs, lift your hands. And on your exhale, if you have your ankles, really kick your shins back. So that leg strength, that grounding even happens here. If you're able to, maybe you can flex the feet and feel the feet pressing up towards the ceiling. Zip your navel in, and then breathe here. And then as you exhale, slowly lower down and bring your left ear to the mat. If you had your ankles, you can kind of windshield wipe your knees or your ankle side to side on the way down. Taking a couple of breaths to chill out here. Left ear to the mat. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. You're going to press yourself up and find tabletop pose. So from your tabletop, I want you to crawl on your, on your yoga mat until your toes are at the back. I'm going to do this sideways so you can see me. We're finding puppy pose. If you know it, go ahead and go into it. Um, it's going to look kind of like a cross between downward dog and child's pose. So instead of our hips moving to the heels, we're trying to keep the hips over the knees. Walk the hands forward and bring the forehead to the mat. This is way too much in your shoulders. Then you can bend one of your arms or both of your arms and bring your forehead onto your forearms. So take a moment here and just come into the earth element of your experience. So starting with the actual earth, rooting down into the tops of the feet and the shins, wake up your legs. Draw those lower ribs in, fire up the belly. Pressing into the palms, shoulders roll back. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, find some softness in your heart space, allowing the heart to melt down and back. So each inhale, finding that strength, finding that effort, finding the fire and the earth, and then each exhale, easing in to the softness of water and air. One more breath in, softening it out. And begin to walk your hands all the way back towards your knees. Take a moment and just sit your heel, sit your hips back onto your heels. All right, we're going to transition into our camel pose. It's kind of our peak pose for the day. Um, it's a really big opening heart pose. But one thing before we go into it, just to mention as we work through these elements of true north, um, instead of just getting caught up in that big explosive energy of heart openers, our, our air, this is our, our heart chakra is our source of that air element, we want to make sure that we stay nice and strong and grounded. And once we do that, our legs and, our, and that grounded earth sensation is really going to help us to find a more authentic and safe heart opener. So if you've got some knee issues, you might want to bring a blanket underneath the knees. And we're going to come to standing up on the shins. 
So immediately, while we're just standing here on the shins, I want you to really press down through the tops of your feet, through the knees. So anytime we have something different on the earth, whether it was our feet, now it's our knees. Our knees are going to be creating those roots and creating that length, almost a rebound effect as you feel the front of the thighs really wake up. You're gonna take the palms of your hands and bring them to the lower back. And how we talked about that water element earlier, I want you to find that kind of movement in your pelvis. So you're spilling your water out the front, really sticking your butt out, and then you're tucking it under so much, you're kind of spilling it out the back, and then you're spilling it out the front, then you're spilling it out the back. So what we're doing in this pose is that almost the spilling it out the back portion. So really tucking your tailbone under and feeling the front of the thighs open up. But you don't wanna squeeze your glutes. So can you feel the tailbone tucked with the support of the hands and then try to release your glutes? Okay. Now you're gonna find the fire of the belly to help lift you up. Roll your elbows back. Lift up, imagine there's someone with a string right in the center of your, your chest and it's pulling you up and then begin to let the shoulders roll back. Keep anchoring the hands, pressing the hips forward, tucking that pelvic bowl under. Lifting from the belly up through the heart with each inhale. Exhale, wrapping the elbows back. Maybe the head comes back and, and the throat opens up if that feels comfortable. And then once again, find the earth beneath the shins and the feet, feel your legs. Start to ground yourself into your navel, core strength, to draw your shoulders back. And then you're tucking, your, you're kind of sticking your butt back, letting your butt come all the way to the heels. And then just come to sitting on your heels for a moment. Bring your hands onto your thighs. Maybe you ground your gaze to the earth or close the eyes. And just be with yourself for a moment. You know, since these practices are really meant to be an embodiment of so much more than just the actual position that we're taking, um, we're, we're working with a lot of energy, especially in our heart space these days when we're tending to be, feel a little closed off, you know, whether it's because we're stressed or we're working at a computer or just because we're feeling a little disconnected. So without trying to do anything about it. Just be with and acknowledge when you start to feel some percolation. Ground yourself down. We're gonna take one more of those camel poses. So go ahead and come up. I'm gonna show you an option I've, I've showed, I think it's been a couple weeks now. Um, looks a little funny, but really helps, especially if you're feeling really tight and closed off in the heart. This is really going to help us to start to feel a little more joyful and open. So you're going to start in the same way. I'm going to turn my back to you so you can see just in case. Start the same way, finding that neutral pelvic bowl. You're going to start to roll yourself back. Then if, uh, if and only if you want to go deeper, you just start to take your hands down to your upper thighs. You're going to take them down just like this. And you're kind of grabbing on thumbs to the outside, fingers to the inside. I told you it's going to look kind of funny, but it's going to feel really great. Now you, what I want you to do is pull your thighs apart. Pull them apart. As you pull your thighs apart, you're rotating those shoulders open. Now pause there. Really root down again through the shins, finding the power of the navel, drawing yourself in, pulling out on those thighs, and then imagine that string lifting you up from the center of your chest. Breathing yourself up and open, squeezing those arms back. Taking one more breath, really open up, pulling on your own thighs as you exhale, slowly, methodically rise. Begin to bring your hips back onto your heels. Lower your gaze down to the earth. Or maybe close the eyes once again. Be with. spaces in between are just as important as the poses themselves. They're all just here to be a context for experience, for awakening. And each posture is an opportunity to come in, to align, to shift. 
just let your hips come to either side here. I'm just going to take your legs around towards the front. All right, kind of shake them out. All right, bring the soles of your feet together here and your knees nice and open. And then we're just going to take a few flutters, just fluttering your knees. Ha, I can already feel my hips popping. Why do we flutter? Why do I do this? First of all, I remember doing this when I was a kid. We were in like PE, or maybe it was in dance, or maybe both. Um, but I mean, I think this practice is really meant to kind of take us back to that childlike space of like being curious and showing up. Again, no, not knowing anything every time you show up, right? You show up with that beginner's mind. But it's also really great to kind of psych out the hips. If we're really tight in the hips and we just come into a really deep fold in the hips, they might kind of stop and clench. We talked about that yesterday, that holding on. Just a couple more little butterfly flaps. Maybe, are you a monarch? I think I'm a monarch this morning. All right, and then pause. And then begin to lift your heart. So lift it up nice and tall. And then lowering down towards the front of your mat. So I want to give you an option too here. Maybe you take your fingertips back behind you, kind of like that Superman cape, and pressing into the fingertips, you kind of roll that pelvis a little forward, but you really get long. And I feel you can imagine like if your fingertips are like the back of an arrowhead, maybe the crown of your head is that arrow point and you're pressing it long. So a nice active forward fold here, staying long in the spine. Taking one more breath. And then with your exhale, hands come in front and then just begin to melt. Let your spine round. Let your chin come towards the chest. Let yourself surrender. So we find the other way we can work with earth. All right? We just pressed into it. We used it as an agent to act against so we could find our own earth, our own length, our own stability. And then we can also surrender to it when we need. When we need to let it go. And your next inhale breath, go ahead and bring yourself all the way upright. And take your knees towards the sky and extend your heels towards the front of your mouth. Taking the blessings away from the sits bones. So we're moving a little bit backwards from our butterfly into a caterpillar. Why not? Everything else is crazy out there. So let's go ahead and find our caterpillar pose. Inhale. Bring the hands next to your hips. And you're going to use them to be like braces. So sit up nice and tall. Roll the shoulders back. Feel the fibers across your heart center opening up. So now we're using those hip points as our roots to really find the earth. And we're finding that rebound or that rise from the sit bones through the crown, but also using the hand as a guide, so pressing into the hand. Take another inhale. And then as you exhale, begin to take yourself forward into more of that state of surrender. So if you notice, my feet are nice and soft, my <clears throat> not flexing and keeping anything strong. Same thing with my head. It's nice and heavy, letting the chin dangle down to the chest. Next inhale, slowly begin to lift your head up. And then you're going <clears> to <throat> make your way into a seat with the feet on the earth, knees to the sky. So before we completely surrender out into our little puddle of Shavasana, we're going to come one more time up into a little bit of that fire energy because finding these opposite states, it can really make the cool and expansive Shavasana that much better of an experience. So we'll start here, hands behind the knees, and we're gonna do a little magic. If you lean back, start to walk your feet in, and magically your feet are gonna float off the mat. You won't even have to do a lot for that. Now before we do anything else, I want you to lift up through the heart, really elongating the spine, C kiss those shoulder blades together and then begin to lift your feet, your ankles and wake up your feet. So that can mean flexing them, it can mean pointing them, but whatever brings that energy of awakening 
that earth energy into the legs. Now draw the navel in, lifting up through the sternum once again. Hands can stay here to support you or extend them forward. And again, taking what you need. The heels could even be on the earth. And can you not, can you not suffer here? Doesn't mean you don't struggle, but the suffer, are we mm, crunching up your face? Are you drawing inward? Or can you find a state of expansiveness? One more breath. As you exhale, go ahead and cross into a cross-seated position. Bring the hands next to you. And as you press into the earth, this time see if you can lift your hips and your knees, maybe your feet. I'm not feeling that one today. Go ahead and lower it. We're gonna do one more of those poses here. If you wanna try any other variation, maybe you straighten up your legs or grab onto your big toes and straighten your legs. Wherever you are, again, it's not about getting further than you did yesterday or even doing what you did yesterday. It's just about being in it now. How can you embody the best place for you? This practice is like a medicine. We want to give ourselves the right medicine. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, cross your legs the other way. Press the hands into the mat. Lift the hips. Lower the hips down into the earth. And then go ahead and let your legs come out in front of you. And we're going to lower down onto the back. All right, once you've come onto your back, draw the knees first into the chest. And as you walk side to side, imagine you're walking your hips a little longer on the mat so you're getting nice and spacious in your back body. And then take the soles of your feet up towards the sky and rock from side to side and bring your hands right underneath the lower back. Let the feet be heavy and maybe you kind of move them around. Your shoulders stay grounded. And then pausing here, this is our waterfall pose. If you have a shoulder stand practice and you'd like to go into a deeper inversion, you can find that here tipping the toes back into plow. If you have it, you know it. If you don't, just stay here and we're gonna breathe. And just allow that gravity of grounding, that sensation of grounding to trickle down from all the legs into the heart. One more breath in and out here. As you exhale, let the knees come in towards your chest and just hugs around your shins. Once again, you can rock side to side, settling into the low back. This time you're gonna keep your knees hugged in towards your chest. And you're gonna extend your arms out nice and wide. Let's actually extend your left leg down, if you choose. This is gonna be a little deeper a little deeper twist, so if you want both knees, go for it. You're going to take your right knee to the left side of your body, all the way across. Reaching the right arm out to the side. Haven't done a lot or any twists really this morning, so be really mindful. If you're like me, you can, you can do like me and um, anchor down that left, that right knee with your left hand. Just breathe. As you breathe, I want you to come into that state of surrender, just allowing gravity to do the work. As we shift towards the restful, the mindful rest of our Shavasana. As you inhale, shifting towards center. Draw the left knee up to meet the right. Straighten your right leg out. Take your left knee over to the right side. Left arm reaching out. Opening up through the left arm. Try to keep that shoulder anchored. The right hand can be your assist to this side.
And go ahead and come back into center. Bring the right and the left knee both into the chest, nose up towards your knees. Give them a big squeeze, hug them in, love them tight, and then release it out into that puddle of surrender, into that pile of ease as you just allow <clears throat> your physical body to melt down into the earth. So as you lie here, keep your awareness anchored in your experience. Where our attention goes, our energy flows. It's why these poses, this practice, helps to ground us out of our head because it brings our awareness, it embodies it into something more solid. And so to really soak in the sweetness of the space you've created, try to stay embodied, embodied into observing your breath, embodied into recognizing when your mind drifts. And just like when you're drifting out of a balanced pose, or just if you're needing to refocus, to reground, it just looks different when we're not physically moving. I'm going to leave you here to just be mindful of anchoring back a few more breaths, a few more moments of the sweetness. Again. mindfully reawaken your body. And we're not forcefully reawakening it. We've taken a few moments of rest, so we're restfully awakening. Restfully just bringing some awareness of the fingers and the toes. And without disturbing your space much, without really coming out of this surrender. Draw the knees into the chest and just let yourself melt over to the fetal position on either side. Either side. And pressing yourself all the way upright, finding a comfortable seat on your mat. As we close our practice, I want you to find your Nice true north alignment in your seated posture, feeling grounded, perhaps a little more stable and centered than you were when you arrived an hour ago. And then to close our practice, for those who practice with me often, you know this is my favorite mudra, but we're going to take our unshakable trust and in interlacing the hands, especially lately. Unshakable trust. Trust is is what we can rely on, what we can choose over the sensation of fear. Right? And this trust comes from a place of um, recognizing the past times in our lives that have been challenging, the past times in our lives where we faced obstacles or things that were uncomfortable. And we made it through because we're here. We're resilient beings. And so we trust that place that has gotten us through. We trust that we have those tools, that we have that spark. And it just requires embodying, right? Embodying, realigning, coming in. So thank you for showing up today, for grounding your day in this practice. We're going to close just a couple minutes late here, but... I really wanted to close in mantra, and for those at home, if 
you want to sing along, you're more than welcome to join me. Otherwise, you can just listen and receive. The mantra that I'm sharing with you today, the words are Wahe Guru. And what it symbolizes is celebrating. Wahe is a like a woohoo or yes. You know, I am my own guru. Guru, that which takes us from darkness of ignorance into the light of understanding or the light of awareness. So I'll sing and feel free to join from the beginning if you know it. Otherwise, receive it and join along in a couple verses. Wahe, 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 Wahe. One more time for those who wish to join. One more moment to acknowledge the embodiment of this practice. As I shared yesterday, the first sutra in the Yoga Sutras is that the practice of yoga is now. And this means now is an ever present now, but especially now, with all that's going on in the world, it's an opportunity to come back. To come back and align yourselves with your true north and embody that which sets your heart on fire. Bring the palms to touch, thumbs to the third eye, acknowledging that inner guru, that inner light within yourself and one another. And I bow to each of you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for practicing with me today. Again, um, these classes every Sunday at 10 a.m. are offered in partnership with the San Antonio River Foundation. Hopefully, um, if the weather gets nicer, as the weather gets nicer this spring and it's not so sprinkly and chilly, we'll actually be offering it outside once again. Um, but either way, you can rely on us to be here to keep offering these practices for you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to have you. Um, for those of you on the retreat, can't wait to meet with you later on today. Um, for those not on our retreat or haven't heard about it, um, we are actually offering a virtual yoga retreat this weekend. Um, it's been a really great way for us to connect and to really dive in to this practice, um, something that I'm hoping to offer more. So anyone who's interested in getting a little more, a little juicier than just these once a week um, practices with, with me and, and wanting to spend a little more time with yourself, I, um, I would love to know. Let me know if you're interested in perhaps joining in on the next one. Um, thank you guys so much and have a wonderful Sunday. Yeah. <laughs>